$1,200, funds allocated from the General Fund's Clerk's Office Training and Transportation. Okay, yeah, I have a motion by Councilwoman Cross, supported by Councilman Johnson. Is there any discussion? Um, don't need to bring this up. I apologize, but it's the annual conference that we're attending. It doesn't say that in the motion. So my apologies. I just noticed when you read it out loud that it doesn't say what we're really attending. So my apologies. <laughs> well, through the chair, I just have something to, um, is this, if something COVID-wise, I mean, we're, this is located somewhere else so that you're going yes. to be? Through the chair. It's in Grand Rapids, but however, should say the uh, COVID pandemic be to where they want to cancel, then it would be virtual and there would be, um, I don't know if there'll be fees involved to it because we would still be taking some type of classes. Right. I'm advocating that no, there wouldn't be any fees, but you know, there would be no hotel fees or anything like that. It would be virtual. Um, but as of right now, they're planning on having it. We'll see. Thank you. If not, all those in favor say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Motion carries. 6.20 is a motion to approve the purchase of storage shelving from Shelving Plus Rack Systems, Inc. Low quote for the retention storage room located at the Media Center for an amount not to exceed $25,748. And this is funded through TBA Capital Outlay Account. Motion to approve. I have a motion by Councilwoman Cross, supported by Councilman Bazura. Is there any discussion? I have it. Mr. Chair. Councilman Remick? Um, can we just kind of get a brief uh, what this is going to be used for, for this storage purpose? What's going in there? Yes, sir. So this would be uh, currently, uh, Clerk Bauer probably could help answer this. Uh, I, I was just given the charge of measuring and getting everything to <laughs> maximize the amount of shelving we can fit. So I'll defer to her to the retention process and what would be in there. Through the chair this will basically be all the records that i have next door at the taylor fire department so I have permanent contracts council records um different type of permanent records that are going to be transferred from over there to the new area and then um anything new that that comes at me will go over there as well um i don't know if you had an opportunity to see the storage area it is it's nice compared to if i could take you over there and then take you over to the new place you would be amazed um but these will be shelving to store the boxes because i don't know if you've ever tried to store boxes on top of each other doesn't work <laughs> so there'll be a lot of repackaging of boxes so there will be expenses to rebox i plan on reboxing everything and making it nice and neat and secure for the for the future so they don't inherit what i inherited do you think we have enough room for the museum you may <laughs> Oh my yes, compared to that the, was the, trailers, yeah. the or the women's relief corps, yeah. if you were ever in there years ago. So yeah, steps a major improvement next door here. And I know the, the former clerk did have, you know, goals and everything as, as an organization, but as you eliminate staff and the priorities, you know, switch to but now I have a since I've taken office eight years ago it's been a major priority of mine of I'm an organization freak and that has been on my I know the mayor can vouch for it I've been bugging since I took over to make it uniform no more box no more files shoved in copy paper boxes everything's going to be matching labeled and cataloged <laughs> right No other discussion? All those in favor say yes. Yes. All opposed say no. Motion carried. Uh, this now takes us to the open business portion of the agenda, but I think Clerk Power did have something, so we'll do that first. Okay. This is from um, Charles Kynes of 7511, or Chuck Kynes of 7511 Birch. Um, Mr. Kynes would like to know what improvements would you like to see for the city-owned Golden Ridge Cemetery? Now, through the chair, I can, 
I can give my opinion first. I know he didn't really. I know he didn't ask me. That is the one right down here, off of McKinley at the dead end. Okay. So between that cemetery, the cemetery off of Van Bourne South, of course, on Burr Street, and then the one on Telegraph. Major goals is always number one, maintenance, keeping them trees trimmed, cleaned up, which you know I try to do an event every year. Last year it didn't happen because of COVID. I'm hoping that we can do something this year. Nothing's really scheduled yet. I'm kind of leaving it open to see where we are headed, um, but definitely want to get in there. But goals are cleaning up the fencing, um, repairing, replacing, trees might need to be removed. There are some that are dying and need to be taken out. Um, Oak Grove could use a, when you go in and you pull in, when you go to their dumpster, could use a uh, path, more of a either regraveled or asphalted something to for the trash truck to pull in and get, and, and for people pulling in to see their loved ones if they do pull up there. Um, but Golden Ridge, same, you know, there's fencing that needs to be replaced, trees that need to be looked at, trimmed. Um, I also responded to this time. Okay. I sent them some pictures of us. Mm -hmm. uh, of the I suggested one time expenditure to get this done faster. And that's something I wanted to talk to the council about this, this budget. I think we need to get the fencing, the one off the Van Bourne, and just walking with the it's all up and down. It's just, it's just, we got people coming in and camping in the back. Right. You know, so. They do. It, it needs to be fixed, it needs to be addressed. Those are some ways of one. I got, when we first did it, I got an email, why bother? And they said, it's somebody's a one. They might not have anybody around. I, it's up to us to do it. Right, I have family in Oak Grove. Never knew it until I started working in the clerk's office that I have a great grandpa there and a great grandmother. So, you know, it is, regardless of whether I have family at any of them, when I took over, it was a big thing. Um, everybody was sent to my office with the complaints. I'm record keeper, I'm not sure maintenance, how that worked in my, but it, it landed in the right person's lap because I wasn't gonna let it go. And started going there, yeah. And I enjoy it. My kids like it. You know, we've kind of, they've grown up with it and they enjoyed it and we enjoyed it as a family. And so this is a good question and I agree. I've got, I've had help from the DPW. They've, Randy Smith has been great. It was when he can, he would send people, I would, he'd send them ahead of my cleanups and I'd show up on cleanup day and I'd look around and from the first time we did it till now and I'd, text Randy and say thank you, but there's really not anything for us to do here today, <laughs> which is nice. But um, he did get a quote on actually getting, you know, the trees trimmed and all. There was a company that was going to come out and do it um, last year because we just didn't do the cleanup events. Um, we never got around to that, but it is on my list to get with him again and get that quote and, and see about getting that funded because I don't have the money in my budget for that. Um, but it definitely needs to be done. Mr. I was just going to say, I responded to him also because I, I would like to see the Historical Society maybe do a adopt a grave or something like that to, you know, help along with keeping it throughout the times when you're, we're not doing the cleanups or, sure. you know, so I was kind of, I threw that at him too, so. That would be. And I, I, I want to say I appreciate everything that you do for the cemeteries. Thank you. And I know Senate. Councilman Ramick and I had talked about that before, kind of more along the lines of the veterans that are buried mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and, and as far as the veterans, the, we looked at the veterans' graves, and uh, we looked in, we discussed I even the idea of acid treating the, the graves to mm -hmm. bring out the dates and the names of some of those veterans date back, way back. I mean, they go way so back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, with the many of our residents who, who are buried there from our past, uh, even those graves need to be acid treated to bring out who they are, and it's not cheap to do the acid treatments. But uh, again, it, and we had discussed it. Uh, I've discussed it with some veterans people of adopting veterans graves. The same thing, just and, and that's not a bad idea because a lot of people were very interested in doing that. Now, for the people I've dealt with, 
with veterans, but then we got hit with COVID. So yes. maybe we can get get our heads together and bring it back up and see what happens in, towards the summer. And work okay. with us too. We'll all work together. Yeah. It's a good thing. Works for me. <coughs> Thank you. Does anybody on the council have anything? Councilman Johnson? Yeah, I have a question to Councilman Herman. I have a former neighbor in Patrol Drum. 